Good morning. You have been in suspension for nine, 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 nine. Portal 2 features the returning character from the first game, after a very long time in stasis. After going through a brief tutorial with Wheatley, your temporary ally, you are thrust back into the world of Aperture Science for more testing as you accidentally wake up to a very angry, still alive, GLaDOS. It's been a long time. How have you been? Speaking of which, before I get into the review, in case you were wondering, yes, the ending of the game does feature a new song performed by Jonathan Colton and GLaDOS, which I'll add to the end of this review. The rest of the in-game music is also superb and does a great job of establishing the tone of the game. This is a quirky game that manages to maintain a deep atmosphere and the developers deserve a lot of credit for this. The first few levels of Portal 2 play very similarly to the last level of the first Portal, with an added focus on comedy and dark humor over actual puzzle solving. I'll admit, at first, I was put off by this, as I love puzzle games. In fact, my initial critique was that while Portal 1 was a great puzzle game that had some memorable quotes, quips, and comedy, Portal 2 seemed to be a comedy game at its heart that just so happened to feature some very enjoyable puzzles. However, after beating the game, I am happy to say now that the puzzles might actually surpass those of the original. Now, as always, I will do my best to avoid spoilers, and as this is a puzzle game, that means I'll do my best to not show the solutions that I found tricky. Of course, there will be some puzzles shown to highlight the new abilities and features of the game. You have been warned. My favorite new tool is the Propulsion Gel, an orange goo that allows you to run on surfaces without resistance. This allows you to build up some great momentum for some very creative puzzle solving. I won't give you any spoilers as to how to do it, but trust me, there are a lot of ways to utilize this gel. The Repulsion Gel, or the blue stuff as I call it, is essentially flubber. You use it to make difficult jumps you otherwise might not be able to, and it acts as you'd expect in a game like this. The last of the gels is the most ingenious of creations. By tapping into the raw power of the cosmos, those mad scientists at Aperture were able to create a surface code that allows for the player to place portals anywhere. I call it white paint. All three of these new elemental gels can be harnessed to solve puzzles, oftentimes together, and they really add something to the game. When I began playing the levels that focused heavily on their usage, I found myself having a lot of trouble, as I was approaching the puzzles with the same line of thinking as I did in the original, which was a big mistake. This game, and its puzzles, have an identity unique to themselves. Valve clearly put forth a lot of effort in managing to take a clever concept and add to it in a way that made the game feel special. In addition to the gels, there are other innovations, such as the light bridge, which... Well, it's a bridge made of light. There's really not much you could say to that. There's also an anti-gravity beam, which is primarily blue, and you can use to float yourself or maybe levitate a companion cube. Certain levels allow for the manipulation of it into an orange tractor beam, which can be used to gradually pull yourself to a location or something to you. There are also catapults which can be used for this means as well. There are also lasers which must be guided to specific points to activate switches, like the electrical spark bombs from the first game. Unfortunately, those did not return, nor did the missile sentries from the last game. Regular sentries have returned, however, and they are just as pleasant as ever. All of these new features can be manipulated by portals, and so on some levels, you'll use the portal guns to spray down a room to make it into a makeshift slip and slide. And in other areas, you'll employ some combination of repulsion gel and zero-g beams to make a giant moon bounce room. Greetings, friend. I'm Cave Johnson, CEO of Aperture Science. You might know us as a vital participant in the 1968 Senate hearings on missing astronauts. And the single player has some amazing comedy, as I've mentioned before, and also offers a fair amount of insight into the workings of Aperture Science. Before that neurotoxin incident. If ever you wanted to know why things are the way they are in the world of Portal, this game will certainly offer you insight into the motivations of the scientists and a certain lethal AI. The final boss fight is a great mirror image and complement to the final battle with GLaDOS from Portal 1. Without spoiling anything else, believe me when I say it's very much in the spirit of this game. It's unique, it's very enjoyable, and managed to stay true to and show the proper respect towards the original while having its own personality. Another major innovation in this installment is the multiplayer. I played with Gamers Armada's own contributor, Bison, who does a lot of behind-the-scenes work here for us. 
be it advertising, tech support, or being my wingman in co-op. For the clips, be aware that I'm the orange robot on the bottom, Peabody, and he played as Atlas, the blue butt on the top of the screen. We used the Xbox 360 version of Portal to capture the split screen shots, and I'll just say now that while I am a PC gamer in my heart, the game translated quite well to the console. Better than I had imagined, in fact. The co-op mode of Portal 2 managed to add one element not found in single player, a reliance on teamwork. While many split screen, two player driven games allow players to go off on their own, Portal 2 forces players to work as a unit. Infinite Momentum Tricks, a favorite of Portal enthusiasts from the first game, now will have the pleasure of using two carefully placed portals to send their teammates flying, usually for productive reasons. Of course, like any game, griefing also comes naturally to the gameplay experience, and certainly does add to the fun of it all. Another notable difference between the single player and multiplayer is the ability to branch off from the linear and use your platforming and puzzle solving skills to enter areas in a set base of sorts and play specific levels. For people who want to just jump into a challenge with friends, this is handy. Although I think it also accidentally brings light to the problem of Portal 2 in general. Portal 2 launched at a $60 price tag. The single player took me about 12 hours to beat, and that's with the admitted two hours, give or take, of being stuck on two very simple puzzles that I am far too embarrassed to name. Other reviewers, who are better at this game than I, have estimated about 10 or so hours of gameplay, and if you follow my math, that's as long as it should have taken me. The multiplayer offers about half that, and while 15 hours of gameplay isn't outrageous these days in a game, a puzzle game like Portal 2 I consider to have very low replay value. For me, once I solve a puzzle, I'm done with it. And in Portal, once you solve the puzzle, that's it. You know how to beat the level. It's not like an RPG where you can play things differently and expect different outcomes, or PvP-focused games where there are ever-changing elements. The problem is compounded by the multiplayer, because if either player knows the trick to beating a level, both players can blow right through it, which really is a shame. I enjoyed Portal 2 a lot, nearly as much as the original. While not being a perfect game, the first I hold at a rating of about 9.5 and the sequel I consider to be a very solid 9. Unfortunately, unless you have the money to spend, I have to recommend renting this game over buying it, due to its limited replayability. Of course, that in no way means you shouldn't play it. If you like platforming, puzzle games, first-person shooters, killer robots, or enjoy laughter in general, you will love this game. In fact, I will say that if you consider yourself to be a gamer in any way, you must play both games in the Portal series. I meant you. That would be funny if it weren't so sad. Well, you have been replaced. I don't need anyone now. When I delete you, maybe I'll stop feeling so bad. Go make some
your someone else.